Hey there, folks. Great question in the Articulate Storyline forums the other day, and it has to do with a video. So you know it's going to be fun. Developer wanted to do this. They wanted to have a video playing, and at a particular point in the video timeline, they wanted the video to pause, such as you'll see right here. And then they wanted the learner to have to select a particular, click on a particular location on the screen to get the video to begin playing again. So in this case, perhaps we have a chef cooking up here and he's added some oil. And now the learner needs to decide what's the next ingredient that's going to be added. And is it going to be the mushrooms or the onions or the spices or the peppers? We don't know. And the learner can't continue and find out the conclusion of this yummy recipe until they select the right item. Maybe they select mushrooms. Is that it? No, a little too early for the mushrooms. Well, what about the peppers? Sure enough, it is the peppers, and now the video begins playing. So what has happened? We've paused the video, the learner makes a selection, and then the video continues when they get that selection correct. Well, how would we set that up? Let's look at the underlying mechanism over here in Storyline. I've got a video on my screen, and I can scrub through, and I decide I want the chef's hand to pause right about here. So I'm going to leave my playhead right there on the timeline, and I'm going to insert a shape off screen. So I've got a rectangle here that I have off screen. So the learner's not going to see this, but it exists on our timeline. This is the good old off screen object timing technique in Storyline. And what this allows us to do is tie a trigger to this rectangle right here on the timeline. It's a timing mechanism. I want the video to pause right when this rectangle appears on the timeline. So I add a trigger to the rectangle that says pause media this video when the timeline starts for this rectangle. So here's what's going to happen. The rectangle appears on the timeline and it's going to pause the video. So if we preview this, sure enough, this is the behavior that we'll see. Chef lays down some oil in the saucier pan. Actually, it's probably not a saucier pan. It's not deep enough. Probably just a saucepan. But hey, his hand just paused. Ha! Huh, that's what we wanted to have happen. Perfect. So now we've got our first step. We've paused the video. Now we need some mechanism to play the video, to start it back up. To do that, we know that we want them to click the peppers, so we're going to add a hot spot right over the top of those peppers. The playhead is still right there, so we want this hot spot to appear right when the rectangle does. Okay, so it's they can't click on it until the rectangle, until the video pauses. And on this hot spot, we're going to add the trigger to play the media. It was paused and now the hotspot will pick it back up and begin playing it again when the user clicks the hotspot. So we've got our two pieces. That's the simple underlying mechanism. We use an off-screen object to pause the video, hotspot to begin playing it again. However, there's one slight problem here and those of you that use Storyline are saying, hey Mike, what about the... Uh... Okay, let's, let's go show the folks what we're talking about here. Standard Video behavior and storyline allows us to click on a video with our mouse right here to pause it, to play it, to pause it, to play it. That's going to kind of mess things up for us. That's not what we want to have happen behaviorally. So what we need to do is disallow that. We need to not allow the learner to click on the video. Um, really is what we want here. So what we're going to do in keeping with the cooking metaphors, we're going to saran wrap this thing. We're going to put a protective barrier, in this case a hot spot, between the video, and the learner's mouse. I'm going to cover the entire timeline with that as well. What will happen now is when the learner comes out here and they click, it's not going to pause the video. They're clicking the hotspot. They don't see it, but it's there. Now what we, all we have to do is take our little hotspot that we do want them to click, move it to the top so it is above the big protective hotspot. And now this is really the only thing that's going to cause any action to take place on the screen. So we preview this once again. Video is going to play. He drops the oil into the saucepan. It's going to pause. And then the learner can click the peppers to get it to play once again. That's the underlying functionality. All the rest of this stuff, adding an extra hotspot, giving some feedback with layers, that's easy to add in. But this is the underlying functionality, and there's so many different things that you can do with this um, that I really highly recommend that you play with it a little bit. So if you have any questions on this or any other topics, come on over to the eLearning Heroes forums at articulate.com, and we will be happy to help you out with any other questions that you have. But in the meantime, cook up some fun with some Articulate interactive storyline video. It's really dynamite. Have some fun.